I think it's important um, because it allows the students, one, to exercise something they're going to do in real life um, when they go out on the job. Um, you have to collaborate with your colleagues and it really doesn't matter the level of the job. Um, so I think that real world experience is incredibly important for them to do. When I put a little preface, um, this is your peers, they will respond. You should ask there or you should share here. And so some of them like to be connected on LinkedIn. So they'll say, hey, connect with me because they're trying to build up their network. And also I think they have a minimum network build up if they do that assignment. And then they'll also say, I'm asking about um, doing an informational interview. I can't find anyone in X fields. And so it's been nice because they can chime in and chip in of, oh, you maybe want to talk to someone in pharmaceutical sales. Oh, maybe you want to talk to someone who's an OT, occupational therapist. So since part of my um, course for that one is career and um, employment driven, it's nice that they can share and swap stories and ideas or say, have you thought about um, using the alumni database search that we have and reminding them that, oh, that's in the syllabus. Like I actually have seen students said, you haven't re read it, it's on page five of the syllabus. Or it's in the module, did you miss it? And they've helped them with simple questions that I think is really kind of neat. And uh, I was like, thank you, I don't have to say that, that's great. Right now we're doing a co-campus project with the University of Houston, um, where we're having students go into a social media private site um, and they talk about politics and what we're learning in the class with students from the University of Houston going through the same course. We provide the links um, that they need to um, access the Ning site, which is a private site. Um, and in turn, they create their account. And um, once they've created their account, they can go in. And we put in professor prompt discussions, questions every week. And then they have a discussion amongst themselves about what they think um, the you know, right answer might be, even though there's really no right answer. Um, and, they delve into ideas and we're hitting different um, areas of the country, a different belief system, ideology, uh, which is all very pertinent to American government. I've been trying to experiment by research design on larger scale courses and I have um, a large online course of probably three to four hundred students sometimes and it's scaffolded by um, graders and teaching assistants but I know that learners can learn from their peers a lot so my courses have uh, practitioners in the field that are coming back to finish a full degree and we also have first time in college, first generation students. So I think I like to put in um, a peer-to-peer -peer interaction for a couple of reasons. One, they can mentor each other. Uh, two, it provides a space where they can ask questions. So I usually have kind of a, a cafe for them, for um, them just to chit chat and be social. And that gets to know a few of them because there's cohorts that are in the majors that, that follow through and want to chat. But then I also have a discussion forum that's peer-to-peer -peer help that I might not respond. So I give parameters for um, kind of when I'd follow up or when the TAs are expected a 24 to 40 hour period. And since things are immediate and people want a text response, they usually go to the peer-to-peer -peer help forum and will go and ask a question and respond to a question um, first while they're waiting on myself or maybe a TA or a grader to follow up. And it's been great because the threads go on, they have a conversation, and they forget that we look at those, but when we go in, we double check that like everything they're saying, the, peer, the word of mouth from their peers are correct, and also the resources that they're sharing and ideas are relevant to the course and uh, help to answer and guide their work. So a lot of it is, it's a project-based class that I use this in, and so they're giving strategies for how are they gonna develop this portfolio. If they're gonna create their digital identity on LinkedIn, what are some suggestions? So it's been nice to have um, folks that are uh, working in the field. So I have um, industry leaders in Ericsson, to Baylor Health, to Lockheed, giving my uh, maybe junior students that are, haven't worked a day in their life some ideas and experience and exposure. So it's been a nice way to mentor them and also see what they're learning. And I think there's value in learning from your peers because they could be the ones that might hire you one day if they're going out into the workforce. So I think it's a good approach um, in terms of support and also probably well-being for the instructor because you don't need to have uh, 400 emails coming to you uh, questioning and asking and always on demand. So I don't feel um, burdened by that. I can actually teach or facilitate versus um, just being on fire and answering emails in an inbox or messages. There's always the, the potential for um, st students to abuse the interactive thing and you know the because of social media um, people have a different idea of how you act online and so it's good to set an academic tone and you know tell them we don't use 
chat room language and there are rules for netiquette, what you call netiquette, that um, we need to follow. And it, you can private message a student and say, that was inappropriate. Or if it's really bad, you can take it down. You know, you can just delete their post and explain to them on the side that they can't do that again. I rarely have a problem with it. I think modeling good um, online discourse is really important, and um, I think they, that they pick up on that. This is an academic setting. Um, you use your best English skills. You're trying to communicate as clearly as you can, and I think they usually get that. I, they get it in a writing class. I'm not sure because I know in some uh, disciplines they'll say, oh, my students have told me that I shouldn't grade on their writing because this is biology. So I think it would be harder in another um, discipline to keep the writing and the, and the tone you know, academic, but I've been able to manage it. I like the challenge of it, so. Some of the problems you might run into, especially if you're utilizing social media for such a project, is that still, there's gonna be students that who do not want to engage in that way. Um, and it's our policy that um, we cannot compel them to create a digital footprint. Um, so in that sense, that's one pitfall when you have students that aren't uh, necessarily thrilled with the idea, don't want to do it. So you have to have an alternative assignment available for them to complete. I think students learn that they can teach and learn from each other by having them work in collaborative groups. The biggest way I use that in my class is they'll write an essay on a piece of literature that everybody in the class has read and share that and then they do some critique of each other's writing. Um, that's the only real collaborative thing I have in, except for the, the discussions which are very collaborative. It's just back and forth and back and forth for a couple of weeks. But um, there's some trepidation on the part of faculty of having students work together, that they're going to go off task or that if there's a requirement that some students won't participate, some students will do all the work. And um, that's the same as on campus. Face-to-face uh, -face classes and collaborative work have the same problems as they do online. It's easier for the faculty member to monitor it online, though. You can see who's gone in and added something to the group. Um, so I think that uh, online teaching has a lot of potential um, for small group work. Our LMS, well, we've had several, but they all have a small group tool. They can form um, teams or small groups. And so when we do training, we always tell, you know, we always show that feature and explain the benefits of using it. But if they have had a bad experience face to face with group work, um, they'll tend to dismiss it without thinking about how it could really work online. So it's a, it can be a hard sell, yeah. Um, when you show them, a, you could show them examples from your class or from some other class where the students are, are actually interacting and everybody's participating and how your view as the instructor is an overview where you know nobody can say John did equal amount of work when he never logged on to the group. You know that so it takes some of that guesswork out of it and you can also give students uh, their own special grade. They don't have to get the same grade as everyone in the group. I usually have a little rubric that says here's how your grade for your group work will be evaluated and they know that I'm looking or I wouldn't be able to give that grade.